I would like to assume that as an upcoming bride or groom, you have some idea of what a wedding coordinator does for their clients on their wedding day. But chances are, like many couples out there, you are a bit fuzzy on the smaller details. So to cut through some common nuptial confusion, I am going to give you six of the most common assumptions about a coordinator's role on the wedding day. So if this is your kind of content, stay tuned because trust me, this is not one of those videos you want to skip. You have to watch this through to the end. I'll be right back. <laughs> We constantly talk about how important it is to have a planner or at the very least a coordinator at your wedding because here is the thing even the most organized couple who have paid attention to the very minute details gets to a point where the conversations about the day tends to but who is going to handle what and who will be doing what the unfortunate truth is that while we are encouraging couples to hire at least a wedding coordinator the reality is that most of these couples do not even know the exact roles these coordinators are supposed to perform on their wedding days. Then there's also the African mentality of, if I have paid you for a service, you are supposed to do everything I say, whether it's in your job description, <laughs> whether it's in your job description or not. Although wedding planners and coordinators pride themselves in going above and beyond for their clients, don't be that couple that takes advantage of that. Let that sink in for a second. I'm waiting. Since this tiny miscommunication has caused so much stress in the wedding space, I'm going to give you six things, six common things that your wedding coordinator will never do for you. Well, unless you've agreed upon it and then it's coming at an extra charge. Why not? Let's dive in. Number one. Your wedding coordinator is not a know-it-all. You know, there's a pretty good reason why most coordinators are now choosing not to be called day of coordinators anymore. Think of it this way. The special day that you have spent months or sometimes even years planning and then someone or even a group of people are supposed to magically know the inner workings of that day, the vendors you have hired, and all while ensuring that you have a stress-free wedding that you deserve. Let's be frank, is that even possible? No way! So how do you make it possible? Information, information, information. If you forget to tell your coordinator that you have booked two caterers, how would they know? The more information your coordinator has, the better coordination they can do for you. You can't give 40% information and expect 100% delivery. Life doesn't work that way. To make this easy for both parties, you and your coordinator, I would encourage or I would say that everything that you are doing, every process you are going through, why don't you write it down? Today I did this, I have done this, I've paid for this, I have contacted this person and all that stuff. Have a book, have a book you can list everything you have done. And even share that book or that, um, let's say you've done a Google Docs or whatever, then you can share it with your coordinator so that they can read through everything, the entire process. Even if it's a year, they can read through the entire process of your um, wedding day. That way, they are more informed on how best to ensure that your day is stress-free. My next and second point is that your wedding coordinator is not responsible for other vendors' behavior. This is primarily because coordinators come later into the process, so they play very little role in the wedding design, your budgeting, and your choice of vendors. Coordinators are usually one of the last batch of vendors to be hired, so there's a huge likelihood that other vendors have already been selected and hired by the couple already. This can sometimes be a little tricky and pose problems because the coordinator had no or very little control on which vendor was hired and even if they are professional or not. Unfortunately, this may lead to unresponsive vendors who do not want to work with the wedding coordinator. So it is the job of the couple to uh, merge these two people together, make sure that they are on the same page with the exact same information. Sometimes, or even most times, it's not the vendor's fault when they are unresponsive towards the wedding coordinators. This is because they feel that they've spent months building a relationship with the client and then now suddenly someone comes inside and you are supposed to pass information to them, to pass it to the couple. It becomes a long path for them. So they tend to mostly act unresponsive. They don't want to take the coordinator's call or even reply their WhatsApp messages. It's, it's, it's a whole lot. So as a couple, it is best that you bring in your coordinator at least a month to your wedding so that the coordinator now builds a lasting relationship with the vendors. You get it? So now even the minute you transition the, the vendors to the coordinators, it doesn't look like it's a um, it's a last minute thing. I mean, imagine a makeup artist that has built a relationship with you for, let's say, six months, and then the very week of your wedding, you are now telling the makeup artist or the hairstylist, anybody, you are now telling these people that, don't talk to me again. If you want to talk to me or you want to ask me something, go and ask my coordinator. Sometimes, I mean, we are all humans. It kind of feels funny. You get it. And that's what makes them mostly unresponsive. This is why it's stated in almost all day of contract that the wedding coordinator is never responsible for the behavior of other vendors. Because, I mean, let's look at it this way. If a DJ fails to adhere to the timeline given and arrives late, or the cake, the wedding cake comes in a different color than what you requested for, I mean, there's only so much a wedding coordinator can do. We can try our best to salvage the situation, but uh, ahia, yeah, what can we do? Moving on to our third point, and that is your wedding coordinator is not a cleaner. Let's put it this way. Tear down and cleaning 
is not in the planning and coordination dictionary and it has never been your coordinator's job is to manage and ensure that everything is running smoothly not cleaning or picking up empty bottles or taking food off the table so while it is not the coordinator's job you can expect some coordinators to do it as an add-on so they add it on as a service and then you pay for it or you can hire a separate cleaning crew to handle the cleanup of the entire place or if you can't afford it you can get family and friends to do that for you so that you do not lose your refundable deposit to the venue before we move on to the fourth point if you are finding this video interesting so far and you're getting value out of it why don't you give me a thumbs up point number four your wedding coordinator is not your errand person this one is pretty simple if your wedding coordinator is running around buying cocoa for your guests or buying something that you forgot to buy that which is outside the perimeter of your event grounds they are no longer performing their primary job which is to oversee the smooth operation of your event your whole purpose of hiring a coordinator is to be certain that someone professional and experienced is leading the team of professional vendors you hire to work for you on your day a wedding coordinator cannot manage your events advise on last minute vendor questions or combat any potential disaster all the way from the roadside so it's better to send a family member or a friend instead of the one person who is captaining the ship we move on to our last but one point which is your wedding coordinator is not a server i don't know where this weird assumption came from but let me tell you here and now today there is a huge 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 difference between a wedding coordinator and the server don't try to cut corners by forcing something that shouldn't be we beg you. your coordinator or coordinators play the role majorly as general overseers so they are not there to be serving your wedding guests with drinks and water so if you do not have any member of your family or friends that can handle that part of the serving for you then there are numerous waiting services um, companies out there who can do that at a fee so please don't be cheap contact them hire the right people for the job you beg me she's got a point and now our last point your wedding coordinator should not be added or listed as your RSVP contact. This may seem like such a small and silly detail to take such a firm stance on, but trust me, there is an excellent and important reason why no coordinator will ever do this for you. No coordinator should have the responsibility on being called for for directions on the wedding day. Trust me, I've been there, done that, an unpleasant situation, no more. Instead, get a family member or friends, people, especially people who know the area. This usually happens during the traditional wedding ceremony. I mean, it's the bright house. There is no way the coordinator, no matter how many times they've been there, it's not their turf. So it's not really possible to know the nearest landmarks, be able to give proper direction for guests during the wedding day. So why don't you let people that actually know the venue, i.e. family members from both the groom and the bride side to handle such situations for you. Before we end today's video, I want to leave you with one food for thought. And that is, a great coordinator or a great planner in the grand scheme of things will do anything possible to help their client save money and strive to be as helpful as possible, which means going above and beyond to make their clients happy. But ultimately, the job of a wedding coordinator can be categorized into three main parts. And that is, one, create a schedule or a timeline for the wedding day. And two, act as a contact person for the vendors that the couple has hired. Three, manage the events and make sure that everything runs smoothly. So always keep in mind that anything beyond that is simply a favor and should never be used as a yardstick to determine if a particular vendor is good, oh sorry, a particular coordinator is good at their job or not. An investment in a wedding coordinator is an investment of your peace of mind and not a way to hire one man thousand or hire one, get 20 services for free. No please. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Kindly leave me a thumbs up if you really like today's content and if you're a wedding planner or a coordinator did i leave anything out and if you're planning your wedding is there something that is so new to you something you didn't even know well let's discuss in the comment section below and if you found today's video helpful please subscribe to this channel because i have more content like this coming up also if you're in need of my wedding planning and coordination services i'm going to leave my details on the screen for you to contact me and you can also find me on tiktok instagram wherever as dream wedding planners gh thank you so much for watching and happy planning